Sarah, it looks like you're also a big gardener. You've got this high tunnel here, right? Yes. And then you've got this garden and you've got one over there by Maurice trying to get out of the shot. So how did you get into this? Well, it started small. Um, even when I was younger and lived in um, apartments or rental housing, I would always have pots of tomatoes or peppers. Uh, and then when we moved here, uh, we started gardening just on a very small scale and just over time it expanded and I started to sell to um, friends and neighbors and community members and it's just kind of snowballed and today we have Yellow Hen Farm so we have a flock of chickens we sell the eggs and I um, offer a list of vegetables each week I send out an email on Mondays people order by uh, Wednesday morning, I harvest on Wednesday and then deliver on uh, Thursday morning. And for people outside of my little delivery area, they can pick up at the farm. So it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. And why do you why do you what 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 fuels you to do this? Uh, I like really fresh, um, healthy, clean, uh, organic food, and. I like ha having my fingers, my hands in the dirt. So I'm one of those people who can't can't sit down. My, my family laughs when we're trying to watch a movie or something, because I'll be like, oh, I need to go do something for the chickens, or oh, I gotta do this. So the garden's just a good way for me to use some of that energy and um, spend time out, outside. I love being outside. So can you give our viewers any tips? Yeah, I can. Um, compost. You know, it's, you've got to add compost. That's how we feed our soil. If you're gardening organically, uh, compost is the key. I started composting uh, years ago. I have I have horses, and I started noticing in the pasture that anywhere that they there was manure, that's where the grass was the greenest. And so I started collecting that manure, composting it, and would um, use it in the garden. And here in Georgia, we have our Georgia clay, a lot of the topsoil has been washed away, but from years of just adding compost, I've been able to um, build up a nice, healthy, black, rich, earthworm um, filled soil, and it makes all the difference for healthy plants. So one other tip I would give is um, mulching. Um, mulching keeps down the weeds and it uh, preserves water. So if we're gonna have a dry summer here in Georgia, if I mulch heavily, it will um, keep that moisture in the soil. And also over the years, even though we have a tractor and I have a tiller, I'm finding myself using those tools less and less. I like the quiet, I like to hear the birds when I'm working outside. So what I've started doing is um, using things like cardboard, um, my husband is a builder, so we get a lot of cardboard and um, this kind of ram board that he uses to protect flooring. So I take all those um, materials that he has used and I'll incorporate them into the garden to smother weeds, um, kill it. You know, if I have a cover, cover crop that I've planted, then instead of tilling it in, I'll put the cardboard over it and three or four weeks later, I can plant right into it. Oh. And that, that keeps all the little um, earthworms and microorganisms happy because their, um, their habitat isn't disrupted as much as it would be if I went through and tilled or even, you know, did a lot of hoeing. So this is an example of um, how to handle a, a cover crop by hand. Um, this was actually crimson clover, so it was a big, you know, clover, red flowers, um, planting down this row. And instead of um, cutting it and tilling it in, which is an option, I instead use cardboard, piled up there now, um, to smother it. And it was probably down there for three, four weeks. And then I took the cardboard off and it, here it is. It's already mulched this row, so it kind of saved me. It saved me time, so I'm not going to have to go back and mulch. And I have planted my little um, okra plants right into it, and so the clover would um, would add nitrogen to the soil. So this should be a pretty 
a healthy crop once these start growing, which some of them have. So one of the goals with uh, regenerative farming um, is to not be tilling a lot. We want that carbon to stay in the soil. So, um, you know, that's why I'm, I, one of the reasons I'm not tilling as much. Also, I like to keep the earthworms and other organisms happy in their little habitat. Also, it's uh, less work. If I go and till, um, you know, it's gonna be, it's just gonna be more work. Tilling, you know, takes a lot of time. Um, preparing the bed takes a lot of time. Whereas the cover crop, um, I can just go and make the little hole in, in the spot where I want to plant when it's time. Nice. I love that regenerative ag is catching on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it really is. So Sarah, you're standing outside what you call a high tunnel. Why don't you explain what that is? Yeah. So a high tunnel, um, you know, is the structure with the plastic over it. Um, some of them have sides like mine do that can roll down. Some of them have sides that are um, just always up. But the main difference between a high tunnel and a greenhouse is that a high tunnel isn't going to have a source of heat. So greenhouse, you're going to keep it nice and toasty in the winter with um, some sort of heat source. This high tunnel, it's going to get cold in here, but not as cold as outside. And I was able to get this high tunnel with funding from the Natural Resource Conservation Service. They, were, they may still be offering the grants, but they, I think they are, because I actually have a friend who's going through the same program. Um, and it, with the drip irrigation, you're using less water in here. Uh, it protects the crops. I know last spring we had a terrible hailstorm that destroyed a lot of people's tomato plants and squash plants, but my things in here were, were just fine because they had this protection. Also with climate change, we're seeing this wacky weather in the spring um, where everything warms up and then all of a sudden we'll get a frost warning. And having things in here, I can just close it up and they're a little more protected. It also extends the season so I can plant some warm season crops a little earlier in the spring and then I can go a little longer in the fall um, with those warm season crops and I can grow all year whereas um, in my outdoor spaces if I have kale or even broccoli growing um, you know eight times out of ten it'll be fine out there but then we can get those really cold nights and it will damage it whereas in here it's going to be protected.